Chu, Dr. Gwendolyn Mink, and Billie Jean King. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. Good morning, everyone. As Speaker of the House, it is my honor to welcome all of you to celebrate Congresswoman Patsy Takamoto Mink, a trailblazing elected official, a legendary, legendary champion of equality, and our beloved colleague and friend. Some of us had the honor and privilege of serving with her. Indeed, the portrait we will unveil today is a beautiful tribute to an all-American hero, and let us thank the U.S. Army Band Pershing's own chorus for the beautiful performance befitting the patriotism of Patsy Mink. Thank you, wherever they are. And uh, thank you so much. It is thrilled that we are joined here today by Patsy's dear da daughter, Dr. Wendy Mink. And let us welcome the iconic Billie Jean King back to the Capitol. We honored and celebrated her during this year's Women's History Month, and we're glad to do so again. And thank you to my colleagues here, Kay Pack, the Chair Judy Chu, Education and Labor Chair Bobby Scott, House Administration Chair Zoe Lofgren, and the delegation from Patsy's home state, Senator Maisie Hirono, our former colleague here in the House, Senator Brian Chatz, Congressman Ed Case, and Congressman Carl Cahelli, Cal Cahelli. Uh, I invite them all to join us for the unveiling of the portrait. Shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Judy Chu, Chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus. Good morning. As Chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, or what we call KPAC, I'm so honored to participate in today's incredibly historic portrait unveiling ceremony honoring a pioneer and trailblazer, Congresswoman Patsy Takamoto Mink. I want to express my sincere thanks to House Fine Arts Board Chair, Representative Zoe Lofgren, and especially Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Speaker Pelosi has often talked about her admiration for Congressmember Mink. And when we in the Congressional Asian Pacific Caucus presented the idea of the portrait, she embraced it. It was truly because of her determination and persistence that this portrait will hang forever in the halls of the U.S. Capitol. Congresswoman Mink made history as the first Asian American woman and the first woman of color ever elected to Congress. She paved the way for so many of us, including myself, to follow in her footsteps. Growing up, I never thought I would be in elected office, let alone a member of Congress. It's because I never saw anyone who looked like me in such positions, so it never even occurred to me that it was a possibility. But think of how different this will be with the installation of this portrait. So many young girls will see it as they walk through the halls of the U.S. Capitol, and they will see a shining example of what Asian American women and women of color can do as trailblazers in Congress. By trailblazing, I refer to the fact that Congresswoman Ming changed history for all women. 
She championed Title IX, which bans sex discrimination in all federally funded education and athletic activities and programs. Congresswoman Mink paved the way for greater gender and racial representation and fought hard for gender equity. Known as a mother of Title IX, Congresswoman Mink wrote the bill in part in response to the discrimination she faced during her own educational experience. The bill was even renamed the Patsy T. Mink Equal Opportunity and Education Act upon her passing. This ceremony must be a reminder to all of us, though, that our job is not yet done. We must continue to work together to uphold and strengthen Title IX so that every student can learn, grow, and participate in educational environments free from discrimination. So today, as we mark the 50th anniversary of the passage of Title IX, I'm deeply honored to join Speaker Pelosi, daughter Wendy Mink, fellow KPAC member Senator Maisie Hirono, the incredible Billy Jean King, and all of you in honoring Patsy Takamoto Mink and celebrating her legacy through this portrait. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Bobby Scott, Chairman of the Education and Labor Committee of the United States House of Representatives. Good morning. I'm pleased to join Speaker Pelosi, Senator Rano, Representative Chu, and other members of Congress, Dr. Wendy Meek, uh, Mink, and of course one of tennis legend Billie Jean King, who I have been following for a long time, including watching her win the Battle of the Sexes a long time ago. Uh, young people, just Google Tennis Battle of the Sexes and you'll know what I'm talking about. Congresswoman Patsy Meek has an unquestionable place among the portraits of this institution's trailblazers. As you know, Congressman, Congresswoman Meek became the first Asian American woman, in fact, the first woman of Congress to serve in, in Congress at a time when the country was navigating a particularly painful chapter in our fight for equality in America. Despite the barriers to success for women of color, Congresswoman Meek, Meek uh, channeled her experiences to advocate for her constituents and for every American like her who had previously had no voice on Capitol Hill. I witnessed her dedication and leadership firsthand when we served together on the House Committee on Education and Labor, which I now have the privilege of chairing. And to this day, millions of Americans benefit directly from her legislative accomplishments, including laws that provide for special education, bilingual education, and a head start in education. It was Congresswoman Mink who understood the need for child care for workers who are essential but are paid the least income. For years, she worked to pass the Comprehensive Child Development Act and finally passed Congress only to be regrettably vetoed by President Nixon. It was Congresswoman Mink who championed Title IX of the Education uh, Amendments of 1972 to provide for equitable access to education and athletics regardless of gender, Exactly 50 years later, Title IX remains a pillar to our commitment to providing all students, K through 12 and higher education, to a safe learning environment free from sexual harassment, assault, and discrimination. Unfortunately, we know that sex-based discrimination still persists. One in five women still report uh, experiencing a sexual assault during college. So even as the fight to gender, for gender equality continues, we can all agree that Congresswoman Mink's legacy lives on. So as we all continue her work to secure affordable child care for working families, achieve equality in education, and deliver an America where all can succeed, I thank you for being here today as we celebrate the life's work of Congresswoman Patsy Mink.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Maisie Hirono, United States Senator from Hawaii. Aloha, everyone. I'm really honored to be here with all of you, and I'm, I'm so happy that my delegation from Hawaii, we are all here, and of course, Speaker Pelosi, I know that we owe this portrait to you. And when it was unveiled, I literally had tears in my eyes. I have to tell you that when I first got elected to Congress in 2006, and I met with Nancy Pelosi for the first time, she shared with me the story of how when uh, Nancy was first, in, in her early years in the U.S. House, Patsy Mink was the first, if, if uh, not among the first, to say to her, one day you are going to become Speaker of the House. And I'm really happy that, that uh, Speaker Pelosi shared that story with me because it, it just really showed me how prescient uh, Patsy was in all that she did, but how much she supported women in office. So, of course, I am honored to be here with all of you to celebrate the life and legacy of an icon in American history and uh, my dear friend Patsy Takemoto Mink. And it's wonderful to see Dr. W Wendy Mink here and of course Billie Jean King, an icon herself. As noted, Patsy was a champion for social justice, equality, and civil rights and a trailblazer in every sense of that word. And I was lucky enough to work with Patsy over a number of de years, probably decades, when I was serving in Hawaii and Patsy was in D.C. And the last time I saw Patsy was in 2002 when we were both in the famous Kailua 4th of July parade. And she invited me to have lunch with her after the parade and it was to encourage me to keep going to persevere as I ran for governor that year. Patsy's life and uh, career were lessons in perseverance. As a young student in Hawaii, Patsy had hopes of becoming a doctor. But as a brilliant young woman, she was denied acceptance into medical school, told that they already had enough women. See, they could just say that overtly back in the day. No. Uh, they're a little more careful about those kinds of comments these days, but not enough. So if uh, no medical school, Patsy said to herself, I'm sure, what next? Then what? She applied to the University of Chicago Law School where she was placed as a foreign student. Some people still don't know that the, the Hawaii is a state. But back then it wasn't. It was a territory, but she was certainly a U.S. citizen, not a foreign student. Upon graduation, she wasn't offered a job by any Chicago firm. Sound familiar? Patsy knew things had to change. She was in her 30s when she decided to run for office, first for the Hawaii Territorial Legislature in 1956. Then she went on to become the first Asian American woman elected to Congress in 1965. In fact, she was the first woman of color to be elected to Congress. And the discrimination she experienced firsthand fueled her work for decades to come and her legacy that lasts to today, of course. She fought to make sure that no other woman was ever told no simply because of gender. And to ensure that women in our country have every opportunity that men have. And it was this perseverance that ultimately resulted in her sponsorship and passage of Title IX which, as noted, was um, renamed in honor of her. But Title IX, 37 words, banned sex-based discrimination in schools. Today, we celebrate the 50th anniversary of Title IX, which was, as I mentioned, renamed in Patsy by George Miller, and he was chair of the Education Committee, and I had the opportunity to serve with George Miller on the Education Committee for six years when I was in the U.S. Congress. 37 words long. Title IX represented a sea change for women in our country 50 years later. Title IX is just as important today as it was when Patsy fought for it. Thanks to Title IX, more women than ever before are leading in government, business, and of course, in medicine. 
But while we have come a long way since Patsy was rejected from medical school because of a gender, of course, we still have a way to go for our true equity. And we need to strengthen Title IX and protect the rights of every student to a welcoming and supportive school environment. By working to build on the progress Congresswoman Patsy May worked so hard to secure, we are helping generations of women and girls to come to have the opportunities and the support they need to thrive in, the, in school and beyond. I'm so glad that visitors to our nation's capital will be able to learn more about Patsy and her many accomplishments and that they will be reminded of the power of perseverance. Mahalo, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Army Chorus. Speaker, Chairwoman, uh, Chair, Chairman Chu, uh, Chairwoman Chu, Ch uh, Chairman Scott, um, Senator Hirono, Chairwoman Lofgren, Dr. Wendy Mink, and all the distinguished members of Congress and guests here today. I'm wearing this pink jacket today because it reminds me of the beautiful, colorful flowers of Hawaii when I lived there. I lived in Hawaii for a while. And Patsy Mink is one of my heroes. While I never had the chance to meet her, she made a difference in my life and the lives of women, girls, and families all over the nation. As we've heard this morning, her accomplishments were so many. And she understood exclusion firsthand. We can never understand inclusion. We can never understand inclusion until we've been excluded. Congresswoman Patsy Mink had the confidence and leadership to challenge and change discrimination through the law. Patsy Mink was a major author, mother, and sponsor of Title IX. 
Through Title IX, Congresswomen make led legislation to eliminate classroom quotas for women, and because the law included the word activity, for the first time, women received athletic scholarships. Because of Congresswoman Patsy Mink, our daughters have the same, op equal, uh, same educational opportunities as our sons. Wendy, your mother will always be our champion. It is my honor to salute, celebrate, and cherish Congresswoman Patsy Mink. And I want to thank you so very much. Mahalo Nui Loa. Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. Thank you, Billie Jean, for honoring us with your presence, and that Alana is here with us as well as a personal joy to us. Thank you, Billie Jean, for your beautiful, beautiful remarks about our heroine, Billie Patsy Ming. It was my magnificent privilege to serve with Billie Jean King in the Congress. Bobby Scott served with her on the committee, Mr. Chairman, uh, served with her on the committee, and that was a very special honor. And thank you, Matt Maisie, for mentioning George Miller, who chaired the committee at that time. Her personal story is incredibly inspiring. You've heard some of it here. After rising from her middle humble roots, and she would talk to us about being in the sugar cane fields and the rest of that, that had an impact on sugar policy in the Congress for years to come, as you know. She overcame prejudice and discrimination to ever earn admission to the University of Chicago Law School. Imagine, imagine that, that prestigious law school become the first woman of color, as has been mentioned again and again, to become a member of Congress. During her 12-year tenure on Capitol Hill, she offered bold, progressive, she was a champion of early education, leading the enactment of Head Start bilingual education opportunities, special education programs, and more, and authoring an historic child care bill, and as Bud Bobby, Mr. Chairman, mentioned, a child care bill passed both houses of the Congress only to be vetoed by then President Nixon. And we all know she was a force of nature in delivering uh, Title IX, and she defended it too. In 1975, she led the charge against an effort to exempt athletics from Title IX. After she had to leave Washington to care for Wendy, who had been in a car accident, she was able to put off the fight for another day through her sheer power of persuasion. Now remember how early this was. There were very, very few women in Congress, hardly ever any had served. And Carl Albert was a speaker. This even predates a Chip O'Neill. So this goes back a long way. And yet by force of her personality, the power of her brilliance, her persuasiveness, nobody could ever say no to Patsy Mink. That's just the way it was. You could, but you'd be wasting time because eventually you'd be saying, yes, I, I, I should resist this in the interest of time, but I always love telling the story. Of, she said to me, like in 2000, this way, she said, um, I need you to come to Hawaii to speak at my dinner to make sure nobody runs against me in the primary. I said, well, when is it, Patsy? I'd be so honored. Well, the day it was, I had my town hall meetings on Saturday and my town hall meetings on Sunday. So I said, Patsy, I'm really sorry, but I have a weekend of town meetings. This is pre, way pre-COVID when we had lots of town hall meetings. And um, she said, well, what time are your town meetings? I told her they began in the morning. And she said, well, here's what you're going to do. You're going to have your town hall meetings in the morning. You're going to get the afternoon flight to Honolulu. You're going to come. You're going to speak. You're going to get the red eye back. And you're going to be there for your town hall meetings on Sunday. <laughs> Who could say no to Patsy Ming? <laughs> and it was my honor to do so. It's the first time I ever went to Hawaii without one toe touching the sand or the water or the rest. <laughs> but all again, her contribution on Title IX is historic. 
and not only historic, it's personal in the lives of women and girls in our country and their families. Again, she triumphed. With this portrait, the extraordinary courage packed will be known to all who come to the Capitol. Women and girls, and that's what I love about it, will know about her and that her relentless fighting spirit, Patsy Mink, made an enormous difference for women and girls in our nation. Thanks to Patsy Mink, so many women and girls will have a springboard for success. Indeed, Title IX. Well, let me just say, uh, Edith Green in the House was part of it, and Birch Bayh, I want to mention Birch Bayh was very much a part of it in the Senate. And those of you who were involved in this or its history uh, know of that very well. So again, she was a leader, a pioneer, a collaborator, a cooperator, and she um, always did it with this beautiful smile why she dissected your arguments on the other side. <laughs> right, you remember that? And we always wondered how she could do that with such a beautiful smile. It's our hope that this portrait will inspire us to carry on her fight, not only to defend Title IX, but to build on its success and to build a fair future for generations of women and girls to come. Because when women succeed, America succeeds. Patsy believes that, we do too. Thank you again to Dr. Wendy Mink for being here, but more importantly for sharing her mother with the Congress, with the country, with the world. Your generosity made is a part of the difference that Patsy makes. And again, thank you all for joining us today for today's special, special celebration. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Gwendolyn Mink, daughter of the late Congresswoman Patsy Takamoto Mink. I would like to start by conveying bountiful gratitude to everyone who has been part of the decision and the process to commemorate my mother's work with this portrait, especially Congresswoman Chu and KPAC, Madam Speaker. Profuse thanks also go to Senator Hirono for 20 years of generous words and deeds in remembrance of my mother. Thank you too to Chair Scott for celebrating Title IX and my mother. My mother thought the world of you as a colleague and as an ally. Special appreciation and aloha to Billie Jean King for lifting up my mother's legacy and for lifting up generations of women and girls with your support and advocacy and example. I also want to say mahalo nui to the people of Hawaii, especially voters of the 2nd Congressional District, who put my mother in Congress in the first place and voted for her to represent them 12 times. My mother was devoted to the work she pursued in Congress, especially work for equality, economic security, environmental protection, and peace. She knew that being able to pursue this work in this building was a privilege conferred on her by voters to whom she always felt wholly accountable. My mother did not do her work to be honored for it. She did it because she thought it was right. Sometimes she took a lot of flack for positions she held and for the ad advocacy she engaged. A lot of times she was not on the winning side. But fortunately for all of us, when it came to enacting and defending Title IX, arguably the most transformative governmental policy affecting women since suffrage, my mother was on the winning side, along with legions of feminist activists and millions of girls and women. 50 years on, Title IX opened opportunities and has given students tools to challenge sex and gender discrimination and marginalization in educational institutions. But in too many places, Title IX has not yet secured actual equity, even in the most basic spaces, like locker rooms. And too many places, resistance and backlash crimp Title IX enforcement, and thus also crimp the empowerment of victim survivors of sex and gender subordination. 
My mother held the view that justice requires eternal vigilance. We can't rest on our laurels. We must never greet accomplishment with complacency. She said as much when she celebrated the 30th anniversary of Title IX, shortly before her death in 2002. Then she implored us to greet Title IX anniversaries as a time for rededication, not for commemoration. I think she would hope that her portrait would help inspire that rededication as a reminder to vigilance, a call to activism, and an inspiration to keep doing the work of U.S. democracy. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. This is just a closing now. I should have started with aloha. Say aloha again. Aloha. Aloha, Patsy Mink and her portrait. Thanks to our speakers this morning for offering your heartfelt and brilliant, inspiring remarks. It's great pride that this spectacular work of art will join the Congress' first series. Let us acknowledge the gifted artist, Sharon Sprung, whose outstanding work already hangs in the halls of Congress. Sharon, will you stand, please? Thank you so much. Sharon also painted the portrait of Jeanette Rankin, another first, the first woman to ever serve in the Congress of the United States. And, uh, and then um, Patsy joins another first with this, Shirley Chisholm, the first African-American woman to serve. So this is a series of first, first to come here and all the courage and confidence that that takes, but also for the contribution that they made, but all of these women have um, have met both of those tests. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Aloha. Thank you, Patsy Mink, for your great leadership. Thank you all. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seats for the departure of the official party.